Hello out there in the crypto world. You're with DeFi, IoT, Latin America. Once again, we're gonna to come to you now with the second part of our crypto news. We promised on Monday that we'd come out with the second part because there's so much to cover this last week. Elon Musk has spoken again. Did it affect the market? What do he say? SEC hires an attorney that is totally anti-DeFi. What's that mean for us? And did China really ban crypto? No. Don't go away. Stay tuned. We're going to talk about some of these issues right now. Let's get started. Before we get started, though, I want to jump right into Helium. I know yesterday we had the Helium segment, the Helium news from the jungle. That's going to be our, our Martis, our Tuesday uh, segment. Let's jump into what Helium, though, has announced uh, yesterday and this morning. Let's go in here. Their POC V11, POC V11, the software that's going to limit uh, antenna reach and so forth, according to regulation and, 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 and needs of the area. And this whole thing is supposed to apparently kind of justify, e e equalize earnings in, in, in between everybody because you have a lot of spoofing going on, especially in China right now. I'm not, I know it's like I'm bagging on China, but maybe I am because I really wish they quit cheating and just do things on a normal platform with the rest of us. Uh, and, and, and I feel that they have a great advantage being that everything's made in China and they get everything first, like with GPUs, helium miners, et cetera. They come out, they're already using them. And so that takes away from our... our our ability to make money because remember something there there's only 2.5 million um helium being paid out every month right now for the next two years from november 1st of this of 2021 to november 1st of 2023 there's gonna be 2.5 then there's gonna be halvings every two years now does that mean we're gonna learn earn less well the, the idea is that there'll be more hot spots online as we're seeing happen right now we saw the glitches that took place in the helium uh this last week because there was a lot of uploading going on and so they have a third party now that's going to help out so that they can handle the uploading coming up for the hundreds of thousands of, of hotspots they expect to come on in 2022, right? So what's that mean for us? Well, these these rules, well, let's go through them together. Let's go through them together. First of all, this this is an, an, an action plan that's supposed to be implemented on the 4th of October or somewhere around there in this last quarter. We always kind of know that a lot of these 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 plan these softwares when they upgrade them they will come in later times now the factories are being told now they need to implement this software into the into the new new helium hotspots being manufactured but those of us who already have hotspots are going to need to do updates and we'll be updated on it but there's some things we need to do first if we're not being honest and we're spoofing or we don't have our our GPS location exactly where it's supposed to be, we're gonna get caught for that. And when we start testifying and we start getting the proof of coverage where we either are a witness or a challenger, they're gonna come back as they are uh, not recognized, okay? So we're not gonna make the money we're making if we're not putting ourselves honest in the network. Now the idea is you have iHub coming up now with millions, not hundreds of thousands, but millions of people lined up. I know here in South America that, that we got we, we couldn't do our network here because so many people are going online. Now, we can do it for a while, but there's so many people online with iHub now that you almost need to get in bed with iHub and get your free hotspot miner and put it where you need to put it and then look for holes. So those of you already have your hotspots, you're going to have neighbors around you that are going to begin to get hotspots. Now, the good thing is, is what, what iHub is doing is they have a software that is in line with Helium's Explorer, and so they can see where there's hotspots at and where there's not. So the idea behind that is they're not going to bang heads with those of us who already have our hotspots in place, right? And those in the states and in Europe, my understanding, you're already starting to get hotspots from iHub. You'll be getting more this year. They're supposed to move into Mexico, and I don't know where it's going to go from there. And then work its way down to South America. Now, here's some things though that I think is being implemented to make the game fairer. What Helium really wants is everybody to have a hotspot every 400 meters because that is to their advantage. So with this, you need to have proper antennas that are gonna cover the area that you can need to just do your witnessing in, six or eight or, or 10, and you're only gonna be allowed 10 anyway. So you're being restricted from, from, the, from I think it was 23, if I'm not mistaken, to 10 now during the, a, a daily basis. And so you're gonna be able to earn less, less HNT on the witnessing area, well, on the challenging in the challenger area. And then you have a 20% uh, a little more 20% in witnessing, but where you're going to have most of it is going to be in your data processing with 35% of that 2.5 million is going to be paid out to all the hotspots that are in data processing, processing data. So therein is going to be the key, right? So what they're trying to do is make this a fairer field. Let's look at what they're doing here real quick. 
So it's supposed to implement around the 4th of October. Am I on the screen here? Am I here? Okay. So we're going to have the POC proof of coverage V11 was going to ensure your hotspots asserted in correct location. So it's going to have in the actual testifying processes that each hotspot is actually in its location, right? So that's going to be something that's being added in that whole proof of coverage is that they're going to testify where each hotspot location is. So that's in, 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 in the short story of this, okay? Also, your antenna gain, you assert your antenna gain. So you better, the basic idea here is that if your hotspot, maybe you moved it inside of a hexagon because your, your neighbor was too close to you and so you moved it over so that you wouldn't get so many default uh, uh, testimony, testimonies or challenges or so forth, right? It wouldn't show up, it, it would process, okay? To put it in simple terms. Um, so you moved it, but you didn't actually physically move it. You moved it only on a GPS until so you moved this location over a little bit, but it's in that hexagon. Well, you're gonna have to put it where it's supposed to be now. The other is if you're spoofing, right? If you're in China or you're from the U.S., you're in a place you're spoofing. You're trying to cheat the system. Because of you, a lot of us are not going to be able to actually earn for being smarter or actually figure out the game better than somebody else. They're going to equalize the playing field because some of you people, and I know you listening probably aren't the ones doing it, so I shouldn't say you. Some of those people are cheating, and this is why I don't like the fact that China has a, 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 a hold on the manufacturing for all of these systems. Oh, and speaking of that, speaking of that on the side, you, know, you have about 50 companies now that are applying for of applications, some are being approved already now, to produce more hotspots because of iHub and other that are out affiliating people that are gonna be in the millions, they're gonna need millions of hotspots going into this next year, two years, right? So they're gonna have, you're gonna go from 200,000 to probably maybe, maybe six, eight hundred thousand to a million. If they can produce them, you probably be at two million hotspots in the next year. I don't think they'll produce them fast enough though. That's only it's gonna keep us going slow. But if they approve if they approve fifty more manufacturers, and some of these manufacturers are only making hotspots for China. Now, I personally don't like that because they get first dibs as it is. The other thing is I thought China just made cryptocurrency and crypto mining illegal. Well, you see, it goes to prove what we've been saying all along. It's only illegal for the people like you and I. But for the government and those affiliated with the government, the CCP, it's not illegal for them. So there are going to be all kinds of spoofing still going on. There's going to be cheating going on still in China, in other countries. And I don't like that. But that's my personal opinion. Let's get back to the news. So your antenna gain, you better report it now. If it's something that it's not or it's not situated in the right location, correct it right now. They're going to actually correct antennas or they're going to limit antennas in regional areas where it's not legal or they feel it's not necessary right so you're not gonna be able to reach out and go 15 kilometers and be reading off of of of, of other people's hotspots so far away now that's bad for somebody who lives outside of a city that's great for for people that want to have one hotspot and every 400 meters and to, di to distribute the actual uh, earnings so basically in summary that's what's going on with helium Basically, encourage your, your neighbors to actually get online and get themselves uh, updated. If you do this, Helium's saying that they're going to do a test, uh, like a, t a, a testing, so that you can actually test yourself before all this is implemented, and you can test yourself and see exactly what adjustments you need to make so you can gain better HNT, location of, of your hotspots, etc. right? So that would be for Helium news. The other good news is, as we talked about, you have Big Sky along with, you have the 5G uh, helium miners coming out, the hotspots coming out that will, will establish a 5G cellular network for helium. This is great. This should only increase, I believe, the value of the coin. And this coin should be should go to a value of $30 plus, uh, I would think, by the end of the year. You know, even with all the tax and all the regulation coming down. Uh, and it's going to be keep coming down through the, end of the year. But if you look at it, you see Bitcoin still above 42. Ethereum's hanging around around 3,000 still. Nice thing I like this, I see that Bitcoin and, and Ethereum really have started to separate a little bit. Because you know, usually one pulled the other one down. So you're starting to see some separation going on, which is good news for us. We need that to be separated out if it can be truly decentralized. Uh, you have, those are being shipped out now. And so going into this quarter, you're going to start seeing some of these go online, which will start creating the 5G network. Great success story, which is El Salvador. You have over 2.2 million users. Actually, I think it's 2.25 million users now. Bukele has given reports, the president of, of El Salvador. Basically, they're saying they have 200 Chivo ATMs, which are Bitcoin ATMs, 
One was not working. I guess that's the one that got burned up uh, during their, their apparently their, their riots because they were anti-Bitcoin. Which It's funny, though, because if there's 200 of them in the country and only burnt one, they couldn't have been that angry. I live in Latin America. I know how angry the people can be sometimes. No offense, but I know how they can get sometimes. Okay? So, and even in the U.S., look at lately what's going on in the U.S., right? So you could have, if there was really that much of a resentment for the Bitcoin idea, you wouldn't have 109 of them still working. Now, look at this. You have 100,000 people per day consistently signing up for the account, for the Chivo app. You have also the Lightning Network that comes in, and it's actually saved. And they had some problems. They had the problems with the Chivo app. And the Lightning Network now has functioned well for them with the Chivo app. And um, it has helped them to come online. You have, I think you have, let's see, uh, you have right now in the, light, in, in the Lightning Network, you have 15,600 light, Lightning Network nodes to whereas, whereas you had by the end of August only 6,000 nodes. So you got a lot of people coming on board now to help out with the Lightning Network. I'm glad to see this. This is good. This is good. NFL is going to come out with their own NFTs. They're hoping it's going to have the same success as basketball. Let's see what happens there. Dapper Labs is doing that one. Then you've also got the fact that you have the problem with Tether, that got resolved. Fortunately, they got that money back, $23.7 million. They lost on a $100,000 transaction, but that got corrected, and that money got back. That's honesty. I like DeFi. Now, we have something here. You have still crypto firms hiring. Even though you have all this legislation coming down, crypto firms are still hiring. This is good news. Here's something else we got to look at. SEC hires a DeFi foe. In other words, SEC hires an attorney who is anti-DeFi. Of course, they're going to go after DeFi. They don't like DeFi. They want to control everything about our economics. They're threatened by it. But you know, you got Elon Musk coming out and talking again. Elon Musk comes out and he basically says, hey, I'm no crypto wizard. And it's true. I don't know why I always listen to him or why we do. I don't particularly. But I know when someone wants to work for him, that's great. But take the man for what he is. I'm not disrespecting him, but he anti-mining and how can he be anti-mining because it consumes electricity when your cars consume electricity you know come on let's let's be real about things yeah it must come down and says you know what though in my opinion and this does i think have some weight to it you look at all the financial institutions right in the world they're still buying crypto they're still investing in crypto that's why the crypto market's down now because they're so deeply invested over the whole china debacle right there they know what's going on with 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 the the, the real estate company I won't mention names there but but you have this issue that financial institutions are involved i don't like it very much however what you do have is you have the problem that, well, I guess not a problem. They're buying, but they're selling too right now because they're trying to cover themselves. But if they keep buying and they continue to buy and there's trust coming up, it shows a positive side. So if China's having miners made for them too, then that shows that through all this regulation, crypto's still going to exist. And it must say this can be impossible to do away with cryptocurrency. Last thing we want to talk about would be the, the jargon. I'm going to go into coin, coin market cap a little bit. Let's go through basically a multi-coin wallet. What is a multi-coin wallet? Well, it's not just one that has multi-coins you can put on it, but multi-algorithms, multi-chain. It can cross chains. So you get a wallet that can cross chains, which is a cold wallet. We'll have to do another feature on that maybe next week on the difference between hot wallets and cold wallets. You would DeFi, DeFi IoT Latin America. Don't go away. Stay with us. Every day we try to produce videos. How-tos are coming up as well. Our crypto news our healing from the jungle on Mondays, Crypto News on Tuesdays. This is the second segment. So, DeFi uh, IoT Latin America, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Send us a message. Let us penetrate the algorithms. We want to get this news out there. We're here for you. We want to grow crypto. We want to support each other in crypto. And iHub, hit the, hit the message. We're here to help support this movement going on right now with everybody in hotspots so we can do it the right way. DeFi IoT Latin America, we'll see you soon.